Hey, hey, Kim. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, not only did we win, but there's another thing that we're actually um, about to do and announce something that we I won't be the one to say it, but uh, why don't you tell them, Kim? We're making John Wick Mustang. Our neighbors in the Mustang behind us decided that. Now's the time. They found this about a week ago. A 2012 Mustang GT, very nice car, beautiful. What we're going to be building is basically a clone of the Mustang group by John Wick and the John Wick Mustang. Yeah, that's cool. I'm to put this out there because the whole internet has this misconception that it's a Boss 429. It is not. not. It is not a Boss 429. His nickname was the Boogie Man. Ooh, Boogie Man. This is totally badass. I told her she was gonna cry. She I told her she was gonna cry. Yeah, she was gonna cry. I told her she was gonna cry. It's beautiful. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Oh wow. Oh, that's badass. I love it. Thank you. Good. Yep. Oh, it's so cool, Joey. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. Would you try? A custom, a custom guitar. Jake Petway, Petway guitars. Because I actually didn't know. And the CD bit. That's very pretty. <laughs> that's a, and then it's got a little kill switch like Buck. Yeah, <laughs> for a, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's so cool. Guitar. Finally, Duncan Brothers has come back to Carlisle, Pennsylvania. We were here for the Carlisle Ford Nationals and we rooty pooed and kicked ass all over the place. We have the Boogeyman Mustang here and it stole the entire show. What about Kim and Mike though? Joey, if you would just know your role and shut your mouth and listen to the millions of voices chanting Duncan Brothers' name. So we have Mike and Kim, the owners of the Boogeyman. When they seen the car, they immediately both had orgasms. Mike looked at it, he fell over. Kim looked at it, and she was immediately nine months pregnant. So I want to introduce them right now, if they can keep their composure and know together how great the car actually is and what it's done for their livelihoods. John Wick didn't kill all those jabronis for a Camaro. <laughs> so how do you guys like the car? <laughs> car is great. So far, it's wonderful. The thing with owning a car like this, you better like to talk. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> better like to talk, because it's all you do. All day, everywhere you go, mm -hmm. it don't matter. Hotel, in the parking lot, 
gas station, wherever. And you guys drove it here from Detroit, Michigan, and from Detroit to Carlisle, Pennsylvania, it's at least uh, 3,000 miles. So, Whoa. pretty long drive. <laughs> Eight hours. Math? Scenic I don't know about ground. that math. It it, we took the scenic scenic. Wow, well, it's all about who you know. So, <laughs> hey, there's a Mustang, and it is not an. <laughs> and you can believe that. Yeah. A <laughs> uh, what? An. <laughs> People will just want to talk and talk and talk and talk. And it's funny because when we were at the show yesterday, I think there was a lot of people walking by it and not realizing what it actually was. You got a lot of people going. Oh, it's a 69 or yeah. Oh, they put a new motor in that 69. Yeah. yeah, because like a lot of times the psychology of a car show is like if you see a badass car in a Walmart parking lot, you're going to run up and look at it. But when you see a badass car at a car show, unless there's something jarring that pulls you in, you don't always stop and look at all of them because you kind of get spoiled seeing all of them. Right. So it's very, very interesting that I think we've done such a good job and trying to make this car kind of look dimensionally correct where it will fool the eye and people just walk by and think it's a 69 and then at first they're like oh wow they, they got a coyote motor in there i wonder how they shoot right. on that in and then they look and they're like wow they even put the modern interior in and then at this point it's so funny because like when you explain it to people you, we can lay it out in front of them we can show them pictures and i still don't think they understand especially when you got people running a carfax on your car <laughs> at the hotel yeah tell that story because that's hysterical so we were at the hotel whoa whoa kim don't interrupt him <laughs> yeah, so, so, so we're at the hotel and i see this crowd of people around the car and i'm up in the room and i see someone like take a picture of my vin and stuff and i'm like all right i better go see what's going on down there so i go down and the guy's like hey you know this is a 2012 i said yeah it's my car <laughs> you know he's like yeah, I own a dealership and my grandson said it was a new one and I told him it was a 69. So he goes, I ran a Carfax on it. You know, your car's from Arizona. I said, yep, knew that too. Mm -hmm. And then he proceeds to tell me about all the owners and all that's in it. This morning, I come back to get in the car to move it, to load up, to travel home. And the guy had printed out a Carfax on my car and put it <laughs> under the windshield wiper. Like I didn't know my car was a 2012. Yeah, you what know. a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Creepy. Yeah. Creeper. Creepy. Yeah. No, I guess that's nice. Did you guys have windows in your room? You better make sure he wasn't looking at you while you guys were in the shower. Or yeah, like right, that. right. Weird. If we could get the licensing do it and you play somebody's watching me right there. All right, so uh, talk about some of your favorite stuff, features of the car. What's your favorite parts? Well, you know, my favorite thing. No. <laughs> some of the things I like most obviously the paint color and just the styling of it just sitting there you know it looks like it's going fast the closeout panel under the hood i like that a lot i get a ton of compliments on it and then the wheels you know i love yeah. the wheels they just kind of pull it all in together i have to say the paint color is probably my favorite my favorite well, part of the <laughs> you know, i bet kim's favorite part <laughs> my favorite part is obviously the two things i picked out the paint and the steering wheel. Steering the wood steering wheel. wheel. My two favorite parts. And the seat scoops. I'd like to thank SCT for giving us the tuners and stuff like that. And they are going to be showing our car uh, at SEMA this November. So far, all the SEMA the folks, too, like all the people that, that donated uh, American Racing, shout out to uh, Christopher Plump for cutting these badass wheels. They're just sick and killed it. I really think it has a very quick like look. So. Shout out to Uncle Randy for the bait. The yeah, Uncle Bobandy. Yeah. Bobandy. Right. Bobandy. Right. Garrett. Awesome. Tell us uh, what other events you might be planning on taking it to this year. Obviously, the Woodward Dream Cruise, yeah. Mustang Memories, and we may go to Myrtle Beach Mustang Week. The one good thing about the Detroit area is there's literally a car show every day of the week. So, and we'll probably hit, you know, 50 or more of those by the summer. SEMA in November. Then after that, if uh, Detroit gets their act together, hopefully we'll have a Detroit Autorama. 
It was a very, very fun show, very phenomenal show. Shout out to Redline, tuning struts, foreman struts, quick lift system, and all that stuff. Shout out to them because they were graciously let us in their booth, which was right beside the Mustang Club of America booth, which we're both also members of, and also happened to be going to the Eureka Springs Mustang show next week. Right. So last night we all went out and partied with Bill from CJ's. We had dinner with him and a bunch of the Cervini's crew. Then uh, they were like, oh, we got to go to this um, Venom car club. Party. Well, that was it. Venom Car Club. Yeah. Venom and Outlaws. Venom Outlaws. And dude, those guys are wild. Like, I mean, we've done a lot of these shows and stuff like that, but they know how to have a good time. So shout out to them. I mean, there were just people hanging off rafters and stuff like that. And That's just stuff flying around. They, they did they have, have fireworks, fireworks, actually. Yeah. And cake. And cake. Yeah. You can't go wrong with cake fireworks and fireworks. Beer. Dude, it yeah. was it was nuts, man. It, like, there was just it was it was nonstop. Fun and chaos, and went too late in the night, and we were all, you know, bloated and tired, and too much salt in our food. <laughs> dehydrated. I still feel dehydrated from it all, but wow, what a feeling! At one point, you, you and Bill had both gotten so drunk that you got in a fist fight in the bar there for a minute. <laughs> oh, you made yeah. up. You made up. Over. Yeah, no one's seen that. Doug, that Doug had to, Sandler had to come between you two. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was fun hanging out. So like, I've been on that Mustang podcast like 14,000 times now. And so Doug, Doug flew out to the show. The first time I got to see him in person, he's tall. He's really, really tall. Like, man, so good on him. I wonder, <laughs> kind of wonder what they're putting in the milk out there. So, Doug, you rascal, you got some height. <laughs> Any last words? Oh. Yeah. I don't think I can follow that up. But yeah, I guess in closing, you smell what Duncan Brothers is cooking. Cut.